Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest narration, the web series The Nature of Predators. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 132 Memory Transcription Subject Chief Hunter Isov, Arxor Rebellion Command Date, Standardized Human Time, February 2nd, 2137 The insurgency landed some major gains against Batman. After successful plots with infiltrators on risks, improvised explosives targeted shipyards, government buildings, and military barracks. With human intelligence disseminating ways to homebrew such munitions, it took several detonations for Arxor officials to catch on to the package bomb tactics, which flattened a few officers. One took out a wing of the Prophet descendant Gisnel's palace, though, unfortunately, the government's head wasn't around. My job was selecting which ships to assign to liberate cattle from various sectors. Of course, the last thing I wanted was for the ox or populace to starve. However, if Betterman failed to fill the citizenry's stomach anymore, and the rebellion was teeming with food, it pushed more recruits into our arms. Risking our lives to rescue prey was not something I would have dreamt up on my own volition, but I was trying to entice the UN to see us as honorable allies. Blowing thousands of herbivores out of the sky to liberate them would earn a disapproving nod from Zhao's people, so we turned to piracy tactics instead. Successful missions led to my people returning cattle, with no demands made, to a Terran subsidiary. The rescued herbivores must have been confused to see Oxor in a gunfight amongst themselves, and then handing them off to a free society. We received a warm reception as we docked in the humans' world. I didn't know that the primates had the manpower to attend to rescues, but they would find some place for the livestock. After those positive deeds, we talked the earthlings into providing air support when we offered to raid a cattle world in the Mazix sector. Zao is still leery of taking on the Dominion, especially since Gisnel is targeting my faction rather than Earth. Supposedly, the Battle of Malu had mixed results, a stalemate in the kindest interpretation. I don't know how humanity can hope to take Alpha, let alone Riss. Our task was to survive and create chaos, for as long as was necessary. The downfall of the Dominion wasn't going to happen overnight. Still, it was rejuvenating not to have to perform cruel actions to retain my title, and to see other defectives living open lives. The clips of United Nations forwarded from the archives validated that empathetic dispositions were once common before Betterman began culling weak individuals. Riss touted a number of creative talents and ethical camps. Selecting for violence and aggression weeded out the vibrant emotions that we once possessed. While we were a solitary species, we aspired to higher ideals. Riss had been excited to learn from alien cultures, and the fossil narrators seemed confused about whether our peace offer was ever genuine. Immense sorrow crashed down on me, realizing what our race once was. Perhaps we could be sophisticated sapiens, devoted to reason and honor once more. Zhao vaguely mentioned an additional archive's discovery pertaining to Riss's past, but claimed that he hadn't decided what to do with it yet. I wasn't sure what to make of that statement. The Secretary General promised to explain the missing tidbit down the line, so in the interest of locating humanity, I opted to not push for answers. If it was vital to the war efforts, the information would have been passed along with the initial package. Good morning, Lisa. Yes, sir. Please provide your daily. You were right about everything, Oleg's statement. The conspiracy theorist human bore a sickly sweet grin, and I wished I could smack a smug expression off his face with my tail. Now I guess the Federation abducting humans wasn't that crazy. Now, was it? Lisa huffed in irritation. It's been weeks since the archives raid. Are you going to bring this up every day? How many times do you need to us to stroke your ego? You told me every day that I'm crazy and detached from reality. So I expected an equal number of acknowledgments on how wrong you were, even after I was spot on about the feds being a gene probing on our own lot. Nobody thought, hey, maybe Oleg's onto something. They'd do it to us too. A broken clock is right twice a day, so you've been right twice, and you're still a broken clock. I'm still waiting for the death ray predictions to pan out. Well, that's different. Human institutions are better at covering up conspiracies, so you gotta look at the facts. Follow the money. You're insufferable, I jumped in. What do you get out of all of this baseless speculation, Leaf Licker? Valra twitched to whiskers. Oleg doesn't trust people. Can I tell Sophie why? Uh, I guess, the human grumbled. His parents were pronounced as dead in a car crash, but he never got to see the bodies. 
There were reporters. He thinks the government is, or otherwise, they then disappear. I kind of thought that they were abducted by aliens, but it doesn't seem like the Fetties visited Earth recently. So that leaves human players. You see, the elite just want to keep power, and they do that by ensuring that we mindlessly consume and follow their narratives. The game is rigged from the start, but they want us to keep playing. Lisa pursed her lips. Olek, I don't know how to say this, but did you ever think that the bodies weren't fit for burial? That, um, they didn't recover them intact? Your relatives might have kept that knowledge from you. The relatives who wouldn't take me in and sent me to a group home. Ah, yes. Those people definitely had my best interests at heart. Maybe the bodies were burned, Alra offered. I had a classmate who got killed in a predator attack on a school property. The exterminators torched the defiled body and the entire building. The humans and I stared at the doser with the same amount of bewilderment processing her story. What predator managed to sneak into an urbanized children's facility? Why did the prey creatures insist on burning anything that was so much looked at a predator? It wasn't clear what happened to Oleg's parents, but I could guarantee that the leaf-licking primates wouldn't do something so moronic. Granted, corpses could be vectors for disease transmission, but this hardly sounded like an issue of public health. I thought the empathic creatures mourned their loved ones in ritualistic fashion. That dose's parents would accept the exterminators burning the remains of their child. We don't do that. Lisa was blinking in rapid succession, as though something occurred to her. We perform autopsies on violent deaths. Why would the exterminators burn the bodies? Balra twitched her whiskers. The predator's saliva and DNA is on the body. You didn't answer her question, Rodent, I growled. What if those uh, c c chemicals go got into the water supply, or were absorbed into the soil and, and then to the plants? It would cause a dangerous strain of predator disease. It was clearly from a savage monster, after all. This is the most unscientific sniveling nonsense I've heard from a leaf licker. So you're saying because I picked you up with my claws, your contracted predator disease and need to be burned. I am a contaminant to you. It's plenty verifiable. Being around predators made me want to try carcass food, so it does prove their point. So it does prove their point. It's worth it to me. Besides, you're a good predator. I told you I thought that there were harmless predator disease strains. And you're harmless. I am not harmless. That is insulting to say, Farrah. I am a fearsome hunter. Murderous and marauders cower at my name. Lisa feigned a yawn. <sighs> uh, you're, you're melty on the inside. And for this record, that's not an insult. It's a good thing to have a heart. Have you noticed humans don't like cruel monsters? My sister had me convinced that you were people eating menaces until I met you. You showed us both that Arxel can be different, Vara said. I thought you were going to eat me, but then I saw you really cared. More than anyone else I've known. I'm sure now more than ever that nobody deserves to be alone. Vara and you are just adorable together. Now I've led some teams for the UN, some sensitive missions, but a rebellion like this... You have a cause, an important one, that means something. I like you, because you stand for an ideal. My eyes narrowed to slits. That's easy for you to say. The arcs all following me would love to hear that we're chasing some illusory concept, yes? And I'm sure that they'll be thrilled that leaf lickers like their leaders were being defective. I'm harmless, is that not so? It's okay to care and to have feelings. I know that you're strong, but I don't think that you'd hurt people for no reason, that's all. Valru chittered. Speaking of people you did hurt, uh, where is Keitzel? Lisa tilted her head. Yeah, he should be here by now. He's usually punctual, so I wonder if something's wrong with him. Keitzel has been nothing but a negative presence on the bridge, so I've asked him to work alone. I flared my nostrils, simmering at the memories of the runt. As long as he files his reports, I don't think it'll be necessary to break his tail again. You sent him away, Siffy. I get that you did it for me, but I don't want that. The dossier squeaked. Kaisel isn't the last grey that hates prey that you'll have to handle. If I'm going to stick around as your friend, you have to do better. I tried discipline. I tried feeding him well and giving him power. What do you want me to do? Pet him? Silly, Axel. I have to be the first sapient you pet. I'll be jealous if not. Now, we're going to go find Casey and we're going to be nice to him. The two humans shared a glance before gesturing for Fowler and I to go on without them. Judging by the wordless exchange, it was possible they agreed with my exclusion of Keisel from the group. The scrawny Axel hadn't become the open-minded successor that I'd hoped for. 
nor had he been helpful as a second. The dozer truly was deranged, if she thought showing defectiveness to the condescending runt would change his stance. Why did my best friend care about the treatment of someone who viewed her as food? This is what happens when empathy runs haywire. It is a weakness when it's not contained. I checked that the dozer was balanced enough for me to walk, and strolled out of the conference room. Kaisel's quarters were on the opposite side of our cordoned off area from my lodgings, which was intended to keep him distance from Farah during leisure time. Gasping noises reached my sensitive hearing long before we arrived at our destination. I narrowed my eyes with suspicion. Had the scrawny Oxel managed to re-injure himself through incompetence? I quickened my pace, ringing open the door with slight worry. It seemed wasteful if anything were to happen to Kaisel after the effort I'd put into training him. Felvra chittered as she noticed the Oxel sniffling and cocooning himself in a blanket. He appeared to have been sleeping, though he's jolted awake after our noisy entry. The run struggled to collect himself, but Nuka still dripped from his nostrils. Before I realized what happened, Farah leapt down onto the bed. What's wrong, Geisel? I asked, scooping the dosa back onto my shoulder before she could get eaten. I felt sadness and loss before, yes? My understanding will surpass the average Oxels. You're just the latest person to bully or trick me into doing what you want. You're forcing me to tolerate that prey animal even now. Everyone laughs at my weakness. I didn't want to join the war. I tried to defect to Earth twice, and they shipped me back to the Dominion. I'm used to being discarded at every turn, and my life is nothing but suffering. How can you possibly be suffering? You are well-fed and elevated to a powerful role, are you not? Being able to feel something other than hunger, it's just as awful as starving. I think about things, I revisit things, and it hurts. The doser attempted to wriggle off my shoulder. It's called guilt, Kaisel. You can't see me as anything more than a thoughtless animal without feeding it. You blame me for what happened to the Axel, when you know that it was Farsal and the Koshians. We could be civil with each other. I hate you. You were involved. You helped them make us live like this. I lashed my tail. Don't roar it. Stop, Siffy. I can speak for myself, Barrow hissed. Have you not seen the Betterment were knowingly helping the Koshians a lot more than any of us? The reason you're starving and you live like this is your own government slaughtered your actual animals. They didn't care what happened. I hate them too. Why do you think I defected? But you just squeak and babble on about soft nonsense every day. You know nothing and you contribute nothing. You weaken us as with your squeaking gibberish. The scrawny oxel kept his head pointed away from us and his sides heaved with uneven breaths. I was tempted to explode at him for his comments, but Faura shot me a scathing look as I opened my maw. With flaring nostrils, I let her leap off my shoulder. Kaisel hissed with disgust as the rodent crawled up his arm. Her ginger fur looked bright, compared to the shadowy interior and his grey scales. If you don't want to be in a war, we need to make peace. We don't have to like each other, Faura said. It's time for prey to see predators as people, and predators to see prey as people, not food. Nobody should live like we do now. Can't you agree with that? Kaisel's fixed his eyes, which were narrowed into slits on her. I hate this war as much as I hate you. Get away from me! So we agree on ending the war. That's a good start. Hey, I know you don't want to be alone. Sophie and I are friends, so you don't have to hate me. I picked the doser up, returning her to my shoulder again. I am just trying to make things better, Kaisel. In the only way I know... If you work with me and make an effort with Farah, I can enable your success. I do not wish to discard you, but I must protect her. Come back to the briefing, if that is your desire. I'll be there in a few moments, the runt grumbled. I ambled out of his quarters and moved my pupils towards Farah. The doser looked quite pleased with herself. She'd handled herself with more fortitude and discretion than I could have anticipated, giving Kaisel's hostility. It was true that other Oxel would share those feelings towards prey, so it would behoove me to discover how to change their opinions now. The betterment was overthrown. I did wish for the needless war and the carnage to cease. Too many sapiens have died and lived wretched lives. With the hatred between our people, how could we ever achieve lasting peace? I do not think the Federation wants peace, Farah. Convincing the Oxel is easier, and as you can see... That's not easy in the slightest, I remarked. The doser tilted her head. I've told you many times to reach out to the Federation and make amends for the awful things that have happened. You could get some herbivore allies. 
They do not want to talk to us, yes. I know that is your hope, but it is a fantasy. It is not within the realm of possibility. You don't know that. You haven't even tried. Trying worked for the humans. The humans haven't done what we've done, and their allies are lukewarm at best. Ten percent of the Federation was willing to consider not slaughtering them. You could reach out to that ten percent, send a message to their diplomatic summit. Maybe Zal would help plead your case. The reason the humans won't associate with us is twofold. It's partly because it would kill their reputation with said allies. I wasn't invited, and I doubt they'd show me to the main location if I turned up at the handoff. I won't interfere with their get-together, so get that idea out of your head. Then figure out where they're having the meeting on your own. You could follow them and try to deliver a message, or at least ask Sal instead of assuming he... It's not happening, Rodent. The dozer ducked her head, drooping her whiskers in a way that made me feel guilt. The simple fact was that there was no fixing the rift between the Arxel and the rest of the galaxy. The bad blood stemmed from generational trauma and heinous atrocities. No rebellion could depict us as anything other than monsters, except to the humans. Even the primates hadn't always been sympathetic, due to their open disgust towards cattle practices. I could never tolerate the derision of humans had subjected themselves to, regardless. The goal of my rebellion was to undermine the Dominion, not to sing in the streets with the lift lickers. The best the Arxor could hope for was to overthrow the of betterment and a brighter future centuries down the line. If Vora couldn't get that through her head, she was more delusional than Oleg. End of chapter. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster177, Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Drugzoon, WRE, and Blueberry Cat. Thank you very much for the support. It is super appreciated.